In this video, we're going to learn how to estimate costs using the high-low method. In the previous video, I just walked through some of the ideas around linearity and the relevant range. In our next video, we'll learn the scatter graph method. And in the final video, we're going to learn how to do this doing the regression method. Uh, but let's get started with the high-low method. Uh, I've attached the problem right below this video. You can click on it. It's, uh, there'll be a download link and feel free to use this problem uh, however you see fit. Uh, ABC Inc. has the following records on customers and maintenance costs. And there's January, February, March, April, May, June, number of customers, and there's a related maintenance cost. And it says estimate the cost formula using the high-low method. So the high-low method is actually pretty easy. In fact, it's a bit overly simplistic. We'll talk about some criticisms of the high-low method later, but it's just like it sounds. High-low. So I'm looking for the highest and lowest activity level. And when we talk about high-low, we're talking about activity levels, not costs. Very often, your highest activity level will be the same as your highest cost, and your lowest activity level will be the same as your lowest cost. But when we talk high-low, we're just talking about the activity level. So what's my highest activity level? Let's find that. My high is April, and my low is May. Oh, that's nice that they were right on top of each other like that. My highest level for activity for number of customers was April, and my low was May. We're going to take the high. Uh, activity and low activity and, and use the information around those activities to estimate our cost per customer. So let's do that. Uh, the formula for the high-low method is high cost minus low cost. Now I'm saying high cost minus low cost. What I really mean is the cost related to the high activity level. So in this case our high cost is going to be a, a 2600 and our low cost is going to be 1950 and just to be clear let's say another month had a cost of 2700 let's say january had 2700 i would still use april's cost it's the cost related to the high activity so i'm going to take the high cost minus the low cost divided by the high activity level uh, i'll just say activity minus the low activity. So let's quickly do that. My voice just cracked. Um, 2600 is my high cost. My low cost is 1950. My high activity is 600. And my low activity is 300. So again, 2600 minus 1950 is, what is that, 650 over 300. And let's be clear about units here. It's $650 divided by 300 customers. Now, I haven't actually done this uh, in advance. Maybe I should have. I don't know the answer. So let me just pull up the calculator here and let's figure it out. 650, oh, 650 divided by 300 gives us a cost per customer of two dollars seventeen cents two point one six 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 seven so our cost per customer is two point one six six seven per customer okay but it's looking for a cost formula when when we use the term cost formula in accounting we're asking for that formula for a line and this is going back to basic algebra, high school algebra, early university algebra, linear programming. Maybe it's not algebra now that I think of it. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, the formula for a line is y equals mx plus b. You might see it stated y equals a plus bx or something else. I like y equals mx plus b. That's what I learned. And so let's think about these terms in terms of um, accounting. Y is the cost. M is the cost per unit of activity. X is the activity level. And B is the fixed cost. 
So let's look back to what we've calculated with the high-low method. We've calculated the, the cost per customer. And when I look at y equals mx plus b, it looks like we've calculated m, cost per unit of activity. Our unit of activity is the customer. We've calculated our m. So 2.1667 per customer, probably didn't have to write that again, is m. OK, so we've got our m. But we don't have our, our cost formula. So if I look at this formula for a line, y equals, now we've got 2.1667x plus b. Well, we can figure this out. Now, all we have to do is plug in either our high or our low, either of these ones that we circled. Plug in that information. Remember, the number of customers, that's our x, that's our activity level. The cost is our y. That's our cost. So I have an activity level and a cost that I can plug in here. So let's let's use April, for example. We can either use April or May. They're both going to give us the same answer. In fact, I'm going to do both. You wouldn't have to do both, but I'm going to do both just to prove it. Let's take that high, 600, 2600. So I've got my formula here. I know at that high point, my Y is 2600 equals 2.1667. I know my x was 600 plus b. So now I'm going to use some algebra. I might have misused the word algebra before. I'm not misusing it now. Let's uh, run the calculator. So I want to do this one first. 2.1667 times 600. 2.1666667 times 600. Hopefully I get an even number. 1300. Okay, so let's punch that in. 2600 equals 1300 plus B. Change the signs, change the signs. 2600 minus 1300 equals B. 1300 equals B. So we've got our formula for a line because we know our B, we know our M. That's all you need. So y equals 2.1667x plus 1300. So when it asked me to calculate the cost formula, it was specifically asking for that. So we've answered the question. Now, when I, when I did this, I said, oh, once we get this number, 2.1667, we can either use the high or the low. I want to prove that. So let's use our low point. Our low was 300.1950. So let's plug that in. Y equals 2.1667x plus b. And as we've just said, our y is going to be 1950, our x 300. 1950 equals 2.1667x plus b. Uh, oh, shoot, not x. Uh, sorry, that was 300 plus b. So let's fill it in. 2.1667 times 300 is 650. So 1950 equals 650 plus B. Change the side, change the signs. 1950 minus 650 equals B. 1300 equals B. And we've got the same B as we did before. So our formula for a line, y equals 2.1667x uh, plus 1300. Didn't matter that we used the high or the low point. I wouldn't make my students use both, one or the other, and you'll get the correct answer. Now, why this number is important? Why is this even relevant? Why did we go through all this? Well, it's useful for its predictive value. If next month I said, I think I'm going to have 420 customers. I'm predicting 420 customers. I wonder what that's going to cost me in terms of, and what was the cost? Uh, maintenance cost. So if I think I'm going to have 420 customers, what's my maintenance cost going to be? I'm making up this question, by the way. This isn't part of this specific question. But let's say if my expected number of customers, my expected X activity level, 
is 420, what is my cost, my y? Well, it's very easy, right? You just plug it 420 in for x. So I'm going to go y equals 2.1667 times 420 plus 1300. Two, oh, not 21. Two, I could use this on my keyboard, 0.166667 times 420 is 910. 910 plus 1300 is 2210. Y equals 2210. And I would say, oh, if I think I'm going to have 420 customers next month, it should cost me around 2200 bucks. And it's a planning tool, right? You can plan on your costs. So that's the high-low method. In the next video, we're going to do the scatter graph method.